Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to what is easily one of my favorite videos to film, my yearly gift guide, which I know is a bit late this year and I'm so sorry. This is literally the first opportunity that I've gotten to even consider filming this video, which I wasn't actually even sure if I would be able to make a gift guide this year. I had like a running list on my phone of possible products that I thought at the end of the year might make really good gift ideas and when I checked it, it wasn't very long. And it's mostly because gift guide to gift guide, I try not to repeat the products that I recommend. So if this video maybe doesn't give you the perfect idea that you need, I will link my previous gift guides below because they are all separate unique products. And I still very much stand by those gift ideas as well, but so that they're not all like the exact same thing and redundant, I do try my best to not repeat any of my recommendations and my gift guides almost turn into like my favorite art supply discoveries of the year. So this is kind of like a two-in-one video. Most if not all of these products are new discoveries this year that I'm absolutely obsessed with and I think would make fantastic gifts for a large variety of different types of artists. The first thing is easily one of my favorite art supplies discoveries this year and they are these silver black velvet brushes. These brushes are absolutely incredible. They are some of the best brushes that I have ever Ever tried. These are watercolor brushes and so other than them just being an incredible type of brush if you are buying for a watercolor artist, they come in a ton of different shapes and also sets. So instead of having to worry about trying to buy individual brushes, which I know a lot of higher end or just nicer quality because for the quality of these brushes, they are incredibly reasonably priced. These are up there with my Series 7 brushes, which are like the most expensive watercolor brush you can buy. But a lot of the better quality brushes, you can only buy them in open stock. And so if you are maybe not familiar with brushes or what somebody might like, there are tons of different set options that you could just buy a set that you think would appeal to the artist that you're buying for and you're good to go. These are one of those brushes that hold a ton of paint, but also you can use the like very fine tips of the hairs at the end of the brush and they keep their point. They're just incredible. I've used them in a lot of different videos. So I'm sure if you've been watching me for a while, you will have seen me use these. But yeah, highly, highly, highly recommend the silver black velvet brushes. Something that goes along with the brush idea is this. This is an invention of my own, so sorry for the shameless plug, but these brush rolls came out this year after being in development for over a year trying to perfect the brush roll because I realized that the ones out there just weren't that great and so I put every possible consideration into this design and I'm absolutely obsessed with how they turned out and I think they'd make great gifts so it would be a disservice to you all if I didn't include them in this video. This is what I call the perfect paintbrush roll. They are available in seven different color options. All of the fabric options are really really cool so there's lots of varieties there for you to choose from so opening up this roll you have of course the panel of fabric on the front there and then there are these two elastic bands that are really easy to do up the roll and undo it because for me that was like a big annoyance and a lot of other brush rolls of the different ties that are just way too long and get everywhere and just are not very user friendly but these elastics super easy off and on and your brushes are all good to go. Opening it up here, you have, I did put some brushes in this for the sake of this video so you could actually see how this works. Inside you have this fabric flap that protects all of the brush hairs. There are multitudes of different elastic sizes to fit a ton of brushes. This is not even close to being full, but I spaced them all out so that you could actually see all of the loops and they also tuck into a couple of pockets down here to really keep all of your brushes secure. This added fabric panel on the side too also helps that when you're rolling it up, again a, something that I realized on a lot of other brush rolls is the brush hairs would like poke out of the side but on these ones you absolutely are fully protected. You know we tend to use very expensive paint brushes so you 
do not want to be using a brush roll that can mess those up. So I put a lot of thought and care into the safety of the brushes that you might be putting into this. And yeah, I'm just really, really happy with how these turned out. Even better than I thought when I considered the possibility of looking at trying to make a product like this. And I know there's been a lot of positive feedback from a bunch of you that have these already, so thank you for all of the kind words, and I'm so thrilled that you like them as much as I do. So this could definitely be a more unique gift that you might be able to get someone if you're maybe not sure about the brushes that they might use, but, you know, artists use paintbrushes, so they probably would have a use for a brush roll. Although I will say one of the things that I have sort of gotten feedback on is is that people find it very difficult to choose between the fabrics because they like so many of them. So if you wanted that out of your hands, I actually made a limited edition like a holiday mystery box and it includes one of these paintbrush rolls in a mystery option. So if you don't want to have to pick between the seven options, then that might be something you're interested in. The mystery box also includes one of these really cool rainbow compact palettes and a brush rest bar. But you can see the lid is like the complete color wheel around the edge and then the top also has like the color variants as well. One of those things that are really hard to sort of show on camera but looks really really cool in person. You can also get each of the things individually if you're into that. This again also has something to do with paint brushes although this is more of a side accessory and it is this brush rinse station. Now I know one of these went pretty viral online. It was the Green Stuff World one which is is meant more for like uh, tabletop miniature painting, so I believe it's significantly smaller than this one. This is the Masterson's Rinsewell brush rinser. It's the same idea though, and these are really, really cool and useful. If you haven't seen one of these, which I'm sure most of you probably have, but the brush rinse stations, they have this water reservoir here, and then like an actual water dish portion here, and then this spring thing, it can actually replace the water. So the idea with this is that you can change out your water to clean water incredibly easily and it's awesome especially if you're having to like jump between polar opposite colors with like a very staining watercolor this like completely eliminates that problem and so this is like a gadget but it is a very useful and practical one and i can't see a single artist getting one of these and not liking it and finding it useful so it's a very universal kind of item another universal sort of item along the lines of the brush print are wet palettes. Now these maybe aren't quite as universal because wet palettes you would tend to use more for paint that tends to dry out. So typically wet palettes are used for acrylic paint, but I have used them with gouache that you don't want to like harden out, even though gouache can be reactivated with water. If you are someone that likes using gouache in a more liquidy goo state, then absolutely pick one of these up. This is again the Masterson's one. So this tends to be more specific for like heavy body acrylics. So if you're using something more along the lines of that sort of a texture, then something like this would probably be the kind that you would want to look for. This, I think, is the smallest kind. They come in a ton of different sizes, but there's also a bunch of different types. For instance, this one is an army painter one, and it is meant more for, like, the tabletop miniature idea, so more liquidy acrylic paint. So if you're someone that's using less heavy body acrylics, then you might want to look at something like this. Really, either of them will work. The difference ends up being the sheet that you actually have in the wet palette. I'm gonna open this one to show you. This one's like really fancy. It has like a full lid situation. So the lid comes off. It actually has brush storage in here. And then underneath that, you have the actual wet palette. So how a wet palette works is you have a container that has one of these like fancy foam uh, 
sheets, we'll call it. The Masterson's one has this too. It's just a yellow sponge. What you do is you submerge this sponge into water. The Masterson's one has very specific directions, but the general gist is you wet this sponge, you put it back in the palette, and then you have a parchment paper-like sheet that goes over it, and then you put your paints on that, and it keeps everything nice and wet so that none of your paints dry out prematurely when you're using them. It means you can come back to it after, you know, hours if you want to, you know, have a snack break, a lunch break, something like that. Even overnight, you can put the lid back on it, or sometimes that's almost too much. A lot of people just sort of like kitty corner sit the lid so that it like doesn't become overly wet for your paints. Yeah, these are just super useful. Again, a pretty universal thing that I think regardless of artist, it's just kind of one of those things that you should possibly consider having in your studio for the odd time that you inevitably might be pulling out some acrylic paint. The price does vary depending on the brand and size of the wet palette. These are two quite small ones in the grand scheme of wet palettes. There's like absolutely giant, like I want to say like a 12 by 19 inch ones. And you can of course buy the replacement sponges and paint sheets or whatever they're called as well. This could be another very useful tool that could make a great gift and also just like as a bundle if you were having to like put like a paint kit together for someone this could be like a cool separate additional like item that you could put in that sort of bundle. So we've talked about brushes, we've talked about palettes, now I think it's actually time to get into talking about some paint. The first line of paint, because realistically both of these are a line of paint recommendation as opposed to like individual paint tubes, but the first recommendation I will say is probably slightly more applicable to a mature artist, or at the very least someone that will appreciate the paint, because it is very high quality paint. So there's like an asterisk here, which we will get into some alternatives, but it is expensive, but it is a more unusual type of paint, which is why I think it could make a great gift, because you wouldn't necessarily run into the same possible concern of accidentally buying paint that the person already has if you're having to buy it for someone. But anyway, the first recommendation is the Schmincke Super Granulation Watercolor Paint. Now the good thing is, this does come in a ton of options as to how you can buy it. This is a set of the galaxy colors, of course. You know me, I'm pretty obsessed with galaxies. But this line is broken up into like different series. So this is the galaxy series, there's a tundra series, a deep sea series, forest I think? Can't remember any of the other ones, but they're basically different like location names, like very natural sort of names. <laughs> but they're definitely in more specific categories than a lot of other paint colors. Showing these is really tempting fate with them ending up on the floor. But there you have the five milliliter tubes, at least in the galaxy set and what they look like. But as far as gifting goes, I think the five milliliter packs are probably the more practical option because the individual tubes come 15 milliliter only and they are almost the same price as this. So again, like I mentioned, this is probably meant for somebody more mature, or at the very least someone that will appreciate the quality of paint because it is expensive paint, but it is very cool. A lot of these have a very color splitting property to them. I highly recommend looking up swatches online of these paints because anything that might be like a predetermined computer graphic sort of swatch color estimate on these does not do them justice. They're very hard to describe. They have like wild color separation on some of them. Some of them it's like purple and like brown. It's crazy. It looks super, super cool though. But if you like this idea, but you maybe don't want to spend this much, which again, totally understandable. This is just one of those things that I tried out this year and really did enjoy using so I wanted to include that, but there are less expensive options of this sort of type of color splitting high granulation watercolor. I believe they're called Supervision, which might just be the general line because I know they have mica watercolors as well. I will insert some pictures here of them because I have not personally tried them yet. They constantly tempt me and so I might have to crack very soon and get them because they do look so so cool. But between the two paints, the 
main thing is just that the Supervision watercolors don't use as high a quality pigment. They're more dye based as opposed to like light fast pigments, but they're still really cool watercolors and I think it could be a very interesting gift because it's one of those more unusual paints so it doesn't run the risk of accidentally buying something that someone already has or at the very least it's an easy addition onto existing paints that somebody has because they're very unique and of course can be used in combination with a variety of other existing paints that the person already has. So that is the more unusual watercolor recommendation but if you're having to find someone a more traditional standardized watercolor set maybe you're wanting to buy them a slightly better quality paint if they're an artist just starting out or you yourself want to add to your watercolor collection then I'm sure it's not going to be a big surprise that the recommendation for that sort of watercolor this year is the Magello Mission Gold paints. These are one of those paints that I personally wanted to try out for years and I finally did this year and they were just as good as everyone says. This I'm going to insert b-roll because if I open this the 34 paint tubes are just gonna be all over my studio floor. But this is the largest set that the Mission Gold paint at least come in which is 34 colors and so this ends up being a really interesting option because even at the 34 largest set color price point you are under 200 Canadian dollars and I think I want to say that these in US dollars are like 120, 140 and this is the largest set so for the quality of paint that it is and the amount of paint that you get that price tag is unreal. It's an incredibly good deal. So the largest set might be a little overkill for your price range in terms of gifting, but there are smaller sets available so that price is going to be even less. Here's my palette that I made for mine and so you can kind of see the color selection there of course although when you get into the darker colors they all just look black but really beautiful colors and a very nice color range like a nice balanced color range in the sets. This paint would suit so many different types of artists if you are again having to buy for someone that you're maybe wanting to upgrade the quality of paint that they're using or you're someone that is already at the professional level and just want to try out a different type of paint. As a side mention I know when I did the video on those Mission Gold paints a ton of people raved about the pure pigment set so if the Mission Gold paints maybe don't quite appeal to you then the pure pigment set might. It is a pretty self-explanatory name each of the paint colors included in the set are pure 100% like a one pigment color. So I have not personally had the chance to try them out yet but like I said the comment section was raving about them and I very much trust all of your opinions when it comes to art supplies so that could be another option that you maybe look into as well. Now normally in every gift guide I try to include an art book. I think art books make great gifts. There are a ton of them out there. This year I somehow only have one. Obviously I was like behaving myself for buying art books this year. The specific art book that I wanted to mention this year because again I think it could fit a variety of different types of artists and be very universally appealing to a lot of different people is Minnie Small's The 30 Day Sketchbook Project which a lot of you might have already heard of this book because Minnie Small is of course another art YouTuber. I'm guessing if you're watching this video you are probably pretty into the art YouTuber scene of things and so you might also be a big fan of her channel like I am and her book is incredible. It's a great extension of that so if you really like her artwork then I think you would really like this book but just in general it's a really interesting and great book. As the name would suggest it is a bit of like a project prompt book which would not normally be something that I recommend because I typically am not into those really myself but this one I really like and I think it could be a really cool gift. It could be something that the person that you're giving it to actually goes through and does so maybe this would be a great addition onto another sort of art supply gift but even on its own I think the art in this is lovely. It has a lot of really interesting and creative ideas and it's definitely something that could get someone out of a bit of an art slump so highly recommend possibly checking out this book as a gift idea. The thing that I wanted to talk about is as 
far as I can remember, not something that I have ever talked about on my channel, and it is a bit like art supply artist adjacent, but I use mine all of the time, which is why I'm kind of in disbelief that I haven't mentioned it ever on my channel, but it's one of those things that I think it would make a great gift, so tis the season to mention it. But it is a miniature thermal printer, which I know a bunch of you already are probably like, what on earth are you on? Why would this be in an artist gift guide? But I actually exclusively use mine for art-related projects. I am always using stickers. Typically the paper that you can get for this is sticker paper, so if you've got someone that's sticker crazy, get them this. But mostly I use mine to make packaging stickers. So here we actually have a bunch that I have printed off for the paintbrush roll packaging. So it has my little art logo that I made of the roll. And so these go on the packaging when I package up the paintbrush rolls. It's what does up the tissue paper on them. If you have an artist that maybe runs an online shop, has to package orders, this is like so easy easy and inexpensive to use. I know there's a ton of different ones. This one is like this little mint envelope. So already you have a lot of different like aesthetic options available to you and like various levels of cutesy. But as far as like technology and the thermal printers go, this is really not that expensive. The rolls that go in it aren't that expensive. And so if you are someone or having to buy for someone that runs like a smaller scale business, then this could become like a really cool, useful little accessory that could like up their packaging game. But also I could see like a lot of people if you were into like journaling and wanted to create custom stickers for that and stuff, there's just a ton of different applications that you could use this for. I will say because it is a thermal printer it only prints black or like whatever color the paper specifies. I think it comes blue sometimes as well. You'd have to look into it so it does depend on the type of paper that you actually buy to use in this which it is a bit specific because it's like this size that will fit into the small machines like this. But yeah, there's just a ton of really cool creative art applications that I could see people using with this thermal printer and so I wanted to put this in a gift guide finally because it's just a really cool little device that you maybe hadn't heard of or even thought of using for like an art way. I mean, yeah, highly recommend. The last product that I wanted to talk about that is definitely like the top tier expensive gift, at least in terms of this year's gift guide goes, is the BenQ e-reading light. Now I know I just put up a video on this light I was very graciously sent one, but I have since actually bought one. I now have a blue one in my studio, which it's right beside me, so I will insert footage of it here. But I really, really like this light. It is quite an expensive light, which is why I have it actually even in this gift guide, because it's one of those things where somebody might not really want to buy it for themselves, but they would very happily take one gifted to them. Which I will say, because I'm literally filming this on Black Friday, that these lights have gone on sale. So now is the time to get one if you're considering getting one. Obviously, lighting is super important for an artist and this is a very very nice light. It comes in multiple color options so I of course have the blue one to suit the general aesthetic of my life but it's cool because it means that you could more personally select a color for someone but it really is just like the top tier art light that you could ever need. You will never need to buy another art light again after this. You can change the color temperature, you can change the brightness, it has this really cool curve shape that means you do not get very many shadows. It's very evenly and widely dispersed across your desk. It has touch controls, it's just, it's really packed full of cool fancy features in terms of art and painting lights go. And I did do a whole video on it so you might want to check that out because I know it is a larger investment in terms of like art supplies. So if you want to know about all of the features, my pros, cons, the thoughts, just to generally more of like an in-depth talk about the light, then I will card that video here and link it below. And those are actually all of my recommendations for this year. I know quite a condensed list, but so many of these products have been absolute favorites for the year, so I cannot recommend them enough. And they
they just so happened that they would make great art supplies related gifts. So I hope you found this video helpful whether for a specific product recommendation or just a general idea. I'd of course love to know any of your art supplies recommendations in the comment section and I'm sure a lot of people coming across this video would find that useful as well so please feel free to leave those down below. But that is everything so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.